Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm very happy and I'm very glad to have for an exclusive interview Nana, aka the Dark Man. Thank you for this opportunity and thank you for accepting the request for our interview to the Retro Summer Festival 2022. To Romania, so by Nana, aka the Dark Man in the house. First of all, I, I always love to introduce the artists when I do an interview, but I'm sure that many of the listeners and, and viewers were going to know your name because you're doing music even today after so long time because you're doing for 30 years, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I started actually in, um, in 87, so it's been a minute. I'm sure that many of the of the old generation will remember you from the singles like Dark Man, Let It Rain, He Is Coming, and of course, the, the very famous Lonely. My very first question is, how this famous tracks has affected your artist career? As you said, it is a famous track and um, it was, uh, it is my most successful track to now. So it was a game changer, of course. It changed everything uh, regarding actually everything to make it short. I'm very curious to know how the, the inspiration it came to you to start making music and what, what inspired you? I think the inspiration was um, from my mom. She used to listen to a lot of music in the car when we were driving my dad together. She used to sing a lot. That's where I got first place in touch with music and uh, when i reached a certain age i started of course buying records vinyls then afterwards cds and tapes and i wanted to become a dj so i started actually off as a dj when i was 17 i worked in my, my first club that's how i started and from djing i you know I had, I had the opportunity to play some movies and i and i learned the right people that i was did my first recording in studios i met my first friend back then who also was a dj but he became a dj world champion in mixed and scratching so we had two djs as, as a team he was a world champion and i was was no back. so i thought this was the perfect time to start emceeing so that we could both tour so i started rapping pretty late 21 years i was 21 uh, i started writing my first raps and then i toured with the dj david fashion back then um, and that's how it all started it's a very interesting story I, I always love to hear the people how they was inspired and, and started all of this journey especially such a long journey like you are doing this for a long time and I'm very amazed that you still have the, the, the inspiration and the energy to do this after so long time inspiration comes from from things which I experience which I see I hear and I I feel or yeah, I just observe. Uh, inspiration comes from life. So as long as I'm alive and I have passion for music, I'll always have inspiration, which is great. The creativity comes from, from God. That's something very magical and very special, which you just can't pull a drawer and just pull your creativity out. It has to be there in a specific moment, in a specific environment, and also within a specific vibe, if you will. So creativity is God-given, talent is God-given, inspiration comes from life. And um, still doing music, yes, because it's my passion. I grew up, it's all what I wanted to do, and this is all what I've done in my entire life. I've been DJing, I, I did a lot of events, produced, I, I, I rap, I have a label, everything which is involved in music, I have somehow, I'm connected to it. I guess this is, uh, it's, I'm thankful for that, let's put it that way. I'm very thankful. It's not always easy to find your sweet spot in life. A lot of people don't have a talent or don't even know they have a talent. A lot of people don't know exactly which job makes them happy, you know. It's a great blessing to find out pretty early Oh, okay, I have, a I have a little talent. This is just what touches me and this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. And then also becoming successful with it. That's a great, great blessing. That's probably one of the most unique answers I've heard from an artist. And such a cool one because it makes me think that uh, every artist has, um, you know, some kind of uh, special thing what makes them unique. And uh, yeah, that's, that's a cool one. And that was a really good answer. Well, the, you know, the uniqueness is also certainly from, you know, we are all, thank God unique that's just, but that's great so everybody's unique for sure i think especially nowadays it's it is important to have a certain um ci a certain corporate identity you know so people can remember the way you look the way you sound the way you sing or rap you know There's so much competition there's so many talents and so many good people also out there and it's not easy for new ones to step into the business so it's it's good if you have a, a recognizable voice recognizable maybe also vision but it's, it's first place voice and then you tell your own story and the rest is discipline 
luck, blessings, you know, and knowing the right people. I'm really curious to know, like, you have such a successful career over the years and uh, you have a really good vision on the, on the marketing that's going on. How would you like to describe the music of today compared to the music of the past? The music of today is in first place produced in a digital way, at least most of it, and mixed digitally. Yesterday used to be more analog, used to be more live. Even before my time, you know, music was, of course, you know, recorded from instruments and these instruments have been supplemented by computers and by plugins. So um, the day before yesterday, it was bands. When I was young, that was yesterday. It was a couple of people in the studios and now it's more like a lot of individuals in front of their laptops. That's the main difference from yesterday to today. And of course, you know, as music is always, so it has something to do with the with the environment, with the current situation, the music and the world yesterday was a little bit different than today. You know, it was the world before the internet. At least, at least the perception was the world. There was a little bit more of understanding, more of um, the, th the music from yesterday, from the '90s, has a lot more soul in there. As it has a lot more with love and caring to do. If speaking about love and caring in today's world, sounds even corny, sounds even even stupid somehow. Although this is this always has been and will always be the answer. Love is the answer. We need to love each other, we need to care about each other, we need to support each other. But nowadays, you know, these things are not on a daily basis because everybody's trying to achieve something, he's looking for his goals and, and the, the society is putting pressure on, on, on citizens. So um, it's tough times and, and it's just there was more soul in the music, more emotional. I'll put it that way. And today it is more, it's more rational. The way music is consumed. Yesterday, you would buy a CD or a vinyl or a tape. You know, you have something in your hands. Read who produced what. Where was this? Where was this done? The lyrics. You know, there was more room for fantasy. I'll put it this way. And today, through Spotify and all these platforms, so many, so much music, so much to consume. The amount of consuming is so huge. People who just listen to a song and just skip within seconds because they don't like the beginning of the song. A lot of people listen to music and even don't even know the name of the artist because the amount and the consumption is so massive and so, so, so impersonal, you know. But that's that's the time we're living in. I, it's, sorry for my long answer, answer, but you know, it's, it is the environment and I was just, just uh, showing or talking about both environments today and yesterday and comparing them. Yeah. You know what's really, really nice to, to hear on this? Like I've had a conversation with other artists and we had the same thing, like what you said, because I've, I've told to them all of the, the, the music from the past, for example, the rap music had more soul back in the days and had more message and more love. And, and it was, of course, technically it didn't was so advanced like today, but had more soul, more emotion, more something touching which I, I really miss from the from the music of today especially from um, from the modern rap music but also from electronic music like you know from all the genres yeah absolutely You're absolutely right it was a different world you know it was a different world because you know when 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 does music play the vital role in your life in the first place in your youth when you grow older then you stop listening to music because of different reasons. And um, it was a different society 25 years ago than today. It's more violent than, 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 than yesterday. And of course, the, the youth from today, they are also, especially when it comes to rap, they are also broadcasting from the streets. They are also representing their the youth and their, their environment they live in. There's a lot of shootings, you know, so many I've lost so many young artists from the U.S., you know, young rappers who have died. It's just ridiculous. It's unbelievable how fast, how fast they die nowadays, you know, through shootings and through gang issues. It's crazy. That's today's world. You know, the, the world is changing every day. Sometimes it's so fast that you don't really have a time to keep up and to... Absolutely. To, to just think about it because the last couple of years there was so many things happening you know the, the coronavirus um, then this situation right now what's happening um, in the neighbors and it's kind of really fast and it's it's hard to to process these things so fast absolutely and i mean i don't know how old you are but at least for 25 years ago you were also young as i was let's say you were around your 40s more or less i guess less but let's say you were between 30 and 40 and what you just said i feel the same i'm 53 and i I also feel the same things are very hard to process because there's so much of information going on and so much 
things happen so fast. Now imagine a 15 year old kid, you know, a 17 year old kid, you know, living in this world, you know, it's crazy. I remember that when I started to, to make music, I was 12 in uh, 2002 and there was no, there was no YouTube, there was nothing. Slowly just started to came in all of this technical advantage uh, for everyone. Then YouTube just came in, internet become free for everyone. And you had more opportunities, more opportunities. And every day was, uh, was a technical advantage. Like year by year, new stuff happened, new things happened. And it was really hard to keep up. And I remember that I was a kid when I, in 2002, but all the things happened so fast. And, and even today for the kids, it's so fast. Like they are born and they are in a, in a world where they are surrounded by technological stuff. And it's it's kind of hard to, to imagine how they're processing this. Absolutely. Back to the music, I can tell you that back in the days when I bought vinyl or when I bought the CD, I was happy. I was happy because I owned something, you know, physical from an artist. I was able to give back something to the artist because I appreciate an artist that works on, on the music and it's not just like listening on here and there and it was a different word back then. You know, uh, what makes me think um, that today's kid probably never going to understand or never not going to experience how it was to us when we bought a CD or a vinyl or, you know, a cassette tape or something. It had the, the magic. Absolutely, you did. Of course, but the question is, you know, would they miss it? Would they miss something they don't know? I don't think so. The, what you just said was also things that made me happy as well. I, I bought something. I would DJ in the weekend, earn a couple of couple of Dutch marks, and by Tuesday, the money was gone. I would spend this money for records, for vinyls, you know, for the for the next weekend and for CDs. And even before the CDs came, I was just spinning with vinyls. And I was happy, you know, I had these things in my hand. I bought something, I could touch it, I could feel it. And it left a lot of space, you know, left a lot of, of room for fantasy, you know, for, for just for connecting the dots, you know. And now, and, and when would you see a picture of your idol or somebody you, you, you would admire, maybe in the magazine <laughs> as a poster? You know, there was no internet, so only in the magazine or on the record. Otherwise, no pictures, or maybe in the, in the newspaper. That, that, that's it. And um, so there was a lot of room for imagination and for fantasy and for appreciation and all these stuff. Nowadays, you just you just get everything. You, you see the process of, of the music making in the studio. You see the process of, of mastering. Of, of, of meetings, you see the, the artist when he wakes up in the morning, listening, still laying in bed. You see people even having sex with each other, although they are in public, you know. You see the whole thing. It's just like, what does it give you in terms of appreciation and, and worth and, and value? Really nothing. Today, is it's more like a reality show for most of the artists because they put out a lot of things about them just because to have more attention on different platforms of social media, which uh, it's a point of marketing. But I think back in the days was, was way different. I mean, as you said, when you bought a CD, you had the CD, you, you had the vinyl, you started to listen to the track, you started to imagine what the artist maybe imagined when it's produced of the track. You had the small books and um, uh, for the CDs, uh, you had the lyrics, you had some photos, you had some inside photos. It was such an amazing era. I, I still miss that. I don't because it's it's over. But, you know, let's just let's look forward. You know, it is what it is today. It also had its advantages. You know, it's a different world, but you know, we have to make the best out of it. You know, I would like to know if you have any favorite artists of the current generation right now. Of the current generation, you know, as I started off as a DJ, it's a very always a very hard question when somebody asks me if I have any favorite artists at all. It doesn't matter back then or today, because I listen to a lot of genres and it's, it's, my um, perspective is pretty broad when it comes to music. I listen to a lot of Afro beats today. Samuel G is my friend and also one of the artists I listen to very much. I also listen to R&B. Gassiano Major is also a close friend of mine. I recorded a song with his stuff. is also very nice regarding hip hop. You know, I actually never changed. I started back then with Public Enemy, N.W.A., Dr. Dre. I listened to Tupac, you know, Public Enemy, some EPMD, one of my all-time favorites. I still listen to this music today and it just starts with, you know, Nas, Eminem, you know. If it's nice, you know, I, I just, I, I consume it, you know. There are a lot of artists who are very inspired, they inspire, they inspire a lot. Jack Harlow is also someone who blew up in the uh, in the, um, in the lockdown phase, you know, in 2020 when we had Corona. Uh, Jack Harlow is pretty nice. I have so many artists, man. Rick Ross. Where should I start? Where should I start, man? So much. Just to name a few. I, I always love to hear an artist what kind of uh, music uh, they like 
website or if they have any favorite artist. It's always interesting, especially when um, you know ask someone who produces, I don't know, R&B or hip hop music. On a personal life, they are listening to totally different music, like jazz, electronic music, or whatever. I do. I also do listen to jazz music, you know, classic music. Depends on the mood. Depends on where I'm at. When I was a DJ, and you know, I listen to rock, funk, soul. I even listen to, you know, do you know, uh, Stray Cats, Matchbox, like rockabilly music, South South Side music from the U.S. I listen to actually everything. You know, I was consumed everything which I found interesting. Do you play any instrument? No, I don't. My instrument is the pen. You know, I can also do. Some beats, but it's nothing you were, you know, it's nothing which I want to, you know, the level is not so nice that I would say, oh, my beats are, I'm going to go out with. So I just uh, study, I want to play a little bit of guitar, but it's nothing. I mean, the real artist, I don't want to insult anybody who's a real musician in terms of playing, and playing instruments, you know. I'm very curious to know, since you are uh, a successful artist, and I mean, I'm sure that you had uh, many, many countries you visited over the years. Do you have any favorite place? I have a few, it depends on what, you know. If you ask me, for example, when it comes to food, Food is certainly always a, a former Russian UDSSR country, Uzbekistan. I love Plov, you know, so it's, I, I, I love, when it comes to food, I will say UDSSR countries, you know, I love Japan only because of the food. Tokyo, I love Tokyo. I love, I'm a foodie. I would just even fly there to just eat. I love Tokyo. I love Japan in general. When it comes to Europe, I love a lot, a lot of places, you know, Italy. I love your country as well, you know, love coming to Romania. The beginning of the 2000s and I've traveled many places. You know, beautiful country. The Caribbean is also nice. My favorite spots. Yeah, it depends on the continent. You know, it depends. I have a lot of I have, I have a lot of places. I I really love being countries as well. You know, it depends on what what we're talking about. Is it for for holiday? Is it for you know, meeting people, enjoying food, or driving through the mountains? Georgia was one of the also beautiful countries I've I've seen. Beautiful place. I used to go also very good very often to the Ukraine. I have a lot of friends there, you know, Russia as well. It depends. I've, I've, I've seen a few countries in, in, the, in the past 30 years and uh, I, I, I still love traveling and I have uh, my friends and my, my business partners and of course my friends, husband at least. Since you, you traveled all over the world over the last 30 years, how would you like to describe the audience of different continents? For example, Europe compared to the States. I think the 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 difference between the, the audiences is where were you when you were listening to my music, when you were growing up with the music, when the music touched you. Where were you and what's your association? What do you associate with the music? That's a difference. There's of course, cultures are different, sure. And uh, countries and people are different. But when it comes to music, I believe that um, especially my brothers and sisters in the Eastern part of Europe and Asia, I think they, sorry, I think they um, have a special connection to the music, maybe because it's meant a new era in their lives. You know, the former Soviet Union thing was just fell apart and then they were, you know, looking forward into a brighter future, into a better future. So my personal perception is that fans in these countries, they have uh, probably have the most emotional connection to the music than somebody like you or me or somebody who was back then living in the West and was just consuming also my music, but just as a fact that there were also maybe six, seven, eight other artists doing something similar to my music, you know. It's I'm just assuming, I, I don't, I, I can't tell. How do you feel about all the situation, what happened over the last two years? It's It's been a tough time uh, for all of us. When, when the virus started, it was very confusing, a lot of information, misinformation very confusing, very threatening. People are, are are gone due to the virus. They don't live anymore. People have lost their loved ones. People suffered. It's been a tough time. And especially now, of course, for the Ukraine, you know, imagine as if it wasn't enough to have to be dealing with COVID. Now they lost their loved ones, their homes. It's pretty tough, but I guess we will have to stand together and be strong to overcome these times. It's challenging. It's been challenging for a lot of millions of people. Also sad, of course, you know, I was in the Ukraine like last year in August, I had three concerts the whole year. Unbelievable, but it's true due to COVID. These were all catch up dates. I was in the VIF and um, I've been there a few times very often in the Ukraine and it's surreal and it's just unbelievable to understand that this country is, is a war now. It's just crazy. It's insane. I, I really hope that the whole situation with the war is going to end as soon as possible. And that's all we can do and pray that you know, our, our leaders make the right decisions and, and, and still can provide us with peace and harmony, you know, 
it's, it's important because, you know, this situation in Europe right now has potentials of escalation. And then, you know, don't let us even think about a third world war. So let's pray for the best. When you visit Romania, how would you like to describe uh, the audience in here? And uh, if you have any favorite food or favorite place? Yes, um, favorite food is certainly Sarmale and uh, Mamaliga as well. Um, Romanians have great hosp hospitality, you know, I've always been welcomed in your country. I've seen the good sides, or let's say the the more wealth, wealthy sides, you know, I've been to a lot of cities, big cities. And of course, they are very enjoyable as well, you know. And I've also been to the countryside, you know, and seen how people are, I don't know if they're struggling, but it's a totally different scenario outside the country than what's happening in the big cities. And I've always been welcomed very warm form. I love being Romanian. That's what I also love is a life. I love driving through Romania. I have a show and, and there is time, you know, I like driving from one place to another. It's always been a, a pleasure and, and, a, and a blessing to always visit your country. Always, I always had fun, great performances over there. I have a great network of friends I'm still in touch with, apart from business, you know, my friends since 15, 20 years now in Romania. Yeah, I love, I love your country. Thank you so much. I'm very glad to hear this and I can't wait to see you because I remember back then when you did the show for Urban Beats, uh, it was an absolutely massive show and everybody loved it and it has something unique for this city. And we are looking forward to hear and to see you with the new performance. Me too, me too. I can't wait. I haven't been to Romania for a minute now, you know, since COVID. I haven't been to your country and I was praying that you know, this will be over so we can finally uh, meet again. So I'm glad that I'm coming to your place and um, I'm looking forward to have a great, great evening with you guys and uh, an evening to remember. Do you have any message to your fans? Yes, I do. My dear Romanian brothers and sisters, we are now facing in a time in Europe especially, which is very challenging. Um, I've recorded a new song, Save Our Souls, SOS, to support uh, victims of war, not only the Ukraine, but also other victims of war worldwide. Check out my um, social media accounts, SOS. Every playing, every downloading, every streaming is supporting, will support a victim of war. Let's do something and try to make the world a better place. And apart from that, Looking forward to seeing you very soon, and uh, we're gonna have a great time, I promise. Until then, be blessed, and I'll talk to you soon. See you soon at the Retro Summer Festival. Looking forward to see you. Let everybody know that I'm coming back to your town. Peace. Thank you so much for the interview and for your time. It was a it was You're a welcome. nice pleasure. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me.